to see you again. I'm Dr. Bill Tolson, Certified Master Life Coach, and if you're watching this DVD, it's because you came to my presentation, and I want to thank you for attending. I hope you got a lot out of it. This DVD is to help you recap all the things that I talked about. It's really hard when you are in a presentation to get everything you need, so this is an aid. So, here you go. Life coaching is a new field. It's a new field to help people to look at where they are in their life and where they want to get to. It helps them to evaluate what's been going on with them so that they can achieve something more in their life, something they want to attain. Business leaders, professional athletes and celebrities have known about life coaches for a long time. And they've been using coaches in order to increase their performance because they want to do better in their job. Same thing can be true for somebody in their personal life. Sometimes we meet up against resistance in our lives or we meet up with barriers that keep us from getting to where we want to get to. We live with old beliefs that just don't help us anymore. Life coaching gives you that personal focus. It gives you someone to support you, to move you forward in your life to where you want to get to. I was very excited when I left mental health to get into a field where people can actually move forward in their life to heal themselves and as possible to gain things that you never had before. So you, you want to strive for something? You can do that. You want to get better at a skill? You can get that. And the nice thing is you get that personal quality work somebody to support you, to, to work with you directly through all the steps that you need to take in order to get where you want to. So life coaching is a new field and it has a new philosophy. So I brought that into my work so that I could help people to, to actually get to where they want to get to and get through all the clutter. Life coaching is very different because it is a question oriented process, not an answer oriented process. So when you go into coaching, you get asked a lot of questions. Another thing is you do a lot of writing. You do a lot of self-searching. Why? <laughs> because uh, as we know, if we just keep it in our head, it's not going to work. In life coaching, you take it from your head, this ethereal plane, and you bring it in to writing. And in writing, it becomes a document. You get to see exactly how you're thinking. Me as a coach, I have it on paper, and I go through it and go through it and find out what those blocks are. And then we process it and find out what skill you're going to need to move forward. It's very different than just getting a question answered or taking a medication. It's very different than that. It's, it's work every day. It's discipline, practice. It's very different. The responsibilities on the client. Also, life coaching believes that the answer is within. And that's a big difference. It's a different way to think about it. You know, if I have the answer for me, then I need somebody to come in and help me pull that answer out. Once I got that answer out, then we can make an action plan. Then we can look at other things. What, where did this block come from? What can I do with this block? How do I get past this block so that my future will be brighter or that I can succeed or I can gain what I want out of life? So life coaching is a whole different aim and process. When I was invited to come to this conference, 
I had to look at what is the issue that I want to talk about. Well, a major problem I see in working with dissociative identity disorder clients that I have is that it's very misunderstood. It's very misunderstood by the person who has it. It's very misunderstood by media who, who puts out information that doesn't, doesn't color us well. And then the general public. The general public just doesn't know. I mean, the only thing they have to go on is, is civil for the most part. What I found out in all the years that I've been working with it and being a survivor myself, that surviving is a normal process. It is a normal response to an abnormal situation. And people get really confused about that. If, in fact, we were trained, let's look at it that way, trained through our abuse and trauma to act a certain way in order to survive, when we grow up and we get into normal everyday life, it's just not working for us. So what I have brought today in the information and the new way to help people with DID is to help them to change to thinking that it is a normal process, that if you have it, you are normal. Now, there's differences, yes, but it's, it's a normal response, and I want everybody to understand that. <laughs>
when we get attitudes, as we all know, once we get an attitude, it's fixed. And we tend not to vary off of that attitude. What we need to do for DID is to shift our mindset. Not that it's a problem. Not that, it's, uh, that we can't get better. Not that it takes years and years of work. We need to utilize our three main powers that we have. One, thought. Two, imagination. And three, emotion. Those are the three greatest powers that a human being has and carries. Within our thoughts is our mindset. So if we change our thoughts, it's easier to move forward. If we are able to imagine how we would be different, it makes more of an impact. And that what really embeds it into us is when we actually feel. Because feeling is what embeds something into us. If a stranger walks up to you and, and criticizes you, it bounces off. You don't care. This person doesn't know you. You're not invested in this person. Now, if somebody that you're attached to, that you really care for, make the same comment, it hurts. So you take it in and at some point think that it's true <laughs> because of the emotion. So in order to change, in order to be different, in order to get the future you want, we have to change your thoughts. We have to have a vision. We have to see it. How am I going to look different? How am I going to behave different? How am I going to react different? And then we need to feel it. So to move forward, we change our attitude. Anything's possible. And then we look at how our thoughts are. Do we have a vision? And what feelings are we avoiding? Big difference, because DID and dissociative disorders are about numbing out feelings or going away from feelings. Feelings don't hurt. Well, hurtful feelings hurt. That is true. But what I've talked to with my clients is don't be afraid of feelings because they're like waves in an ocean. They come in and they go out. You can't be happy all day long or all week long or a month long. It just doesn't work. So feelings come in. And if you wait, they'll go back out again. And that's the normal process of everybody. We, we have different feelings during the day. It changes depending on situation and people. So don't be afraid of that. So to give what you want, change your thinking, have a vision, utilize the power of your imagination, see it inside, see yourself, believe in yourself, and then feel it for you. like to talk about my new method. I termed it personal philosophy. Personal philosophy simply is a belief that a person lives by. It's our system. It's all the information, biases, uh, beliefs, values, expectations, uh, comments that we've accumulated in our, in our life that make up who we are. Personal philosophy is the main factor in our human identity. We accumulate all kinds of stuff throughout our years. We're told a lot, we see a lot, we experience a lot. All that gets accumulated in, in our mind. And it is all that information that then develops into a personal philosophy. So in, in order to understand where you stand, we have to look at personal philosophy. So that is my, my new method, my new concept, personal philosophy. What you need to look at is in yourself, what do you stand for? Do you stand for where you came or do you stand for where you want to go? Information is, is different. So. I had a, a lady come to me for coaching. And one of the first questions I asked is, 
what's your personal philosophy? She just sort of looked at me, paused for a minute or two, and then said, I don't know. Why doesn't she know? Because it's not general conversation. You just don't sit down with your friends and lean over and look at them and say, oh, by the way, <laughs> what's your personal philosophy? So it's not something that everybody talks about. But it is extremely important because determining on your personal philosophy is how you view the world, how you think about the world, how you react to the world and how you feel about the world and yourself. So it's real important that you know what the core of who you are, which is in fact your personal philosophy. And as I go through the rest of this presentation, I'm going to break down personal philosophy into four different elements. And that will help you clarify what personal philosophy is about. <music>
And they come out a little bit by a little bit, but they come out very quickly once you're able to identify what's going on in your mind. So it's real exciting and important aspect of this whole personal philosophy method that I have. In DID, not only does the person who is out all the time have a personal uh, philosophy, but also core beliefs, so do each one of their alters. And sometimes those core beliefs are not the same and they cause conflict inside. Once you begin to shift in the main person, the shifting continues like a wave through the rest of the system. So change can happen rather fast and that's really neat. And I have seen this occur with many people that I've worked with. So that's the first level, core beliefs. The second level of personal philosophy is core values. It's probably one of the most important, or second important. Core belief is the most important. Core value is probably the second important because of the emphasis. Core value is what the worth is on each one of those core beliefs. So if, as I talked before, if your core belief is I'm not good enough or maybe I don't deserve blank anything, what is the core value? What is the worth that you have put on top of that or somebody else has put on top of you? on that core belief. So uh, if we look at a scale, there's an easy way to do it. Look at a scale from 0 to 10. Say I'm not good enough is a 9. nine 10 being the most, 0 being the least of how it affects you in your life. So when, when you're having something in a situation today, and it gets triggered, I'm not good enough, comes up, it's a nine, it affects you a lot. And therefore, your core value, how much you place on all these values. And remember, the core beliefs, we have thousands of them. If you're an adult, you've got thousands of these core beliefs in your mind. So therefore, you've got thousands of core values. How I work with an individual is I have them begin to list all their core beliefs. And then next to it, rate the value. Then it's really interesting to watch how the different core val beliefs have different core values. We shift the core beliefs and we allow them to then choose what values they want on those core beliefs. So again, we're working with thinking, changing that thinking, getting out of looping thoughts that go in our brain that are always negative. So core values is very important. third level. How does programming affect growth? Real important. Programming, as I define it, is statements made by somebody who becomes embedded in your mind. There's a lot of us who, who, who can say, oh, I remember when my father or mother said this and that. And you know it. You hear it in your, in your head. And one of the things that I developed when I was helping people when I had my own company was the concept of abuser values, that we get programmed by all kinds of things, but one could be our abuser and that the you're not good enough, you're a bad person, you caused it, and you could hear them saying it in your mind is called programming. Why is it so important in growth? Is it, it pushes down growth. It, it keeps you stuck. Why? Because the programming, the statements that you carry through your life tend to 
support the value that you have on the core beliefs. So, if I have a core belief and I have a high value and I have a statement from somebody very important to me or my abuser that supports it, then I tend to look at that it must be true. Even though it isn't, it must be true because somebody else says it and I remember that. So programming is real important. So in the process of looking at the bottom two levels, now at the third level, we start to say, what are the statements that I bring from my past to the present that I still react my life on? So that third level is validation. And validation is what keeps us stuck. So if we can get rid of some of that programming, or how's this? We can reprogram our own mind. It is possible. And I do it through a process I call positive life statements. And I, I shared it with you in the presentation. So hopefully you remember what I talked about that. But we can reprogram. It is possible. <laughs> Okay, I've discussed the three below it. Now let's get to the fourth, the top of personal philosophy. That is core expectations. Core expectations, how do they affect me? Well, let me tell you. When you look at your expectations, is it yours? Is it where you want to go? Are you living by someone else's expectations that they put on you a long time ago? So say that you, in fact, uh, <laughs> loved your parents. You had a good life. And your father always wanted you to be a lawyer because he thought it'd be really good to have a lawyer in the family. Well, as you grew up and you went through college, you found out, I don't want to be a lawyer. So maybe you became a business person. And then you go through your life and then you always feel bad that possibly dad was disappointed in you because you just weren't doing what he thought you ought to be doing. And then say you lose your father. Might you feel guilty? There's a possibility. You need to look at all the expectations that were put on you through chi childhood, adolescent, into adulthood. Am I living by them? Am I expecting myself to live by them? Well, you need to examine that. Don't live by somebody else's expectations. Live by the expectations you have for you so that you are confident in what you're doing, that you can become passionate in what you're doing and that you get to a reasonable expectation that is specific and measurable for you so that you can be successful in your life. Where do we go from here? I hope you've enjoyed my discussion of my slides. I hope that helps you to, to solidify what I talked about in the presentation and that there's hope. So when you look at personal philosophy and you look at the four elements, understand when, when something happens in your life, that event or trigger from that event goes down through your core expectations, down through your programming, down through your core values, into your core beliefs, pulls up a core belief and comes right back up and surface in your life today. So really, what's making you react the way you do today is not based on today's event. It comes from your core beliefs in the past. You can find that out today. You can remove blocks and move forward in your life. You can achieve whatever you want as long as you strive for it, you want it, you practice it, it is possible. So let's change our mindset that in fact 
Healing for DID is extremely possible. It is here, and it can happen. So if you'd like to learn more, contact me at www.drbilltolfson.com, and we'll talk about it. See what we can plan for you and how you can get the life that you want. Thank you very much.